The Tenebriana beetles of the Namib are famous for many reasons, including that Charles Koch, who founded Gababeb, described them so thoroughly and speculated deeply about their adaptation and evolution. What he revealed was the remarkable diversity of these beetles. The Tenebriana beetles comprise 60 to 80 percent of the Namib beetle fauna. Some genera, notably Onimacris, are speciose, comprising perhaps more than 20 species. The Namib Tenebrionids are also famous for their adaptations to desert conditions, most notably their supposed ability to exploit water in fog. The most important question about these beetles, however, is why are they so speciose? Charles Koch himself attributed the species richness of these beetles to the longevity and stability of their habitat. Thus, the Namib Tenebrionids diversified because they lived within a long-lasting habitat of sand and aridity. Although Charles Koch himself never made the claim that the Namib was the oldest desert in the world, in quotes, he clearly regarded the Namib as an old desert. The assumption of an old Namib was important to his conception of Tenebrionid diversification. However, the diversification of the Namib Tenebrionids is proving to be much more interesting than Charles Cox's comparatively straightforward conception. It turns out that the Namib Tenebrionids are diverse not because the Namib is old and stable, but because the Namib is a young and dynamic sandy habitat. Many of the Namib Tenebrionids are known as Semophilus, which means sand-loving. These beetles inhabit sand dune habitats to varying degrees. In some, the association with sand is so tight that Charles Koch coined the term Ultrasomophilus to describe them. This will be important to the story of the Namib Tenebrionidae. The sandy habitats in Namibia comprise the well-known dunes of the Namib. To refresh our memories, the Namib is confined to the coastal elevations west of the Great Escarpment, shown here in red. Aside from the permanent rivers bordering Namibia, the Orange on the south, and the Kuneni, Okavango, Zambezi, and Chobe rivers to the north, the Namib is transected by several ephemeral rivers that run roughly northeast to southwest. The Namib dunes come largely from sandy sediments washed down these rivers. The most substantial source of sand in this system is the Orange River, and the large dune sea of the central Namib is the most obvious consequence of this. But the dunes of central Namibia are not the country's only dune fields. In the southern Namib, between the Orange and Koichab rivers, there exist several small and scattered dune fields, which are inhabited by Tenebriana beetles. The Namib north of the Kwisib River is gravel plain, devoid of dunes, save for a band of coastal dunes situated between the Kwisib and the Swakop rivers. Dunes begin to reappear in the far north of the Namib, and these are closely associated with river mouths, most notably the Uhab and the Hwab rivers. For the purposes of understanding beetle evolution, the main thing to note for now is how disjunct the Namib dune habitats are. For Somophilus species, like the Namib tenebrionids, this makes for numerous and disjunct habitats, islands in quotes of suitable habitat, so to speak. The disjunct sandy habitats are reflected in a disjunct distribution of species. The darkling beetles of the genus Onimacris reflect this. For example, Onimacris unguicularis is widespread along the Namib coastal plain, and it inhabits gravel plains as well as sandy habitats up to and beyond the Kuneni River. Some species, like Plana and Rugata penis, are more confined to sandy habitats. Some darkling beetle species, like Multistriata, do not inhabit sand dunes at all. Still another species, Piva, is found near the Orange River mouth. One of the curious features of the genus is a group of white beetle species. Onimacris bicolor is the most well-known, but its range is confined to coastal dune fields north of the Huab River. There is also a group of three subspecies of Onimacris lingi, also confined to the dune fields of the northern skeleton coast. These include another semi-darkling beetle, Onimacris marginopennis.
Analysis of these beetles' DNA allows one to work out the patterns of relatedness of the many species in this speciose group, and from there reconstruct the genus's evolutionary history. Comparing Onimacris to another closely related Tinebiarmid species, Physodesma, the clade for the genus Onimacris originated roughly 3 million years ago. From there, the genus has evolved into two distinct groupings. On the one hand, there are the dark darkling beetles, which originated roughly 2 million years ago. They're also formed about 2.2 million years ago, a distinct branch comprising the white darkling beetles of the species Bicolor, Langi, and Margin of Penis. The genus Langi, which now contains three distinct subspecies, originated roughly 1.5 million years ago. Within these species, there has been further differentiation into subspecies. It's clear that there has been vigorous speciation within this genus, which is ongoing still. The species diversity of the Onomacris beetles seems to tell a story of very dynamic speciation. This prompts the question, what is it about the Semophilus beetles of the Namib that has produced such vigorous speciation? Here's a hint. It has to do with the dynamics of past climate. Unlike what Charles Koch thought, it does not come from a long-lasting, stable Namib desert.